Hello, my name is Keshwani. This K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 36. Day 36 out of the third edition. Third edition, day 36, we are on page number 244. And on page 244, you will see uh, a topic of function. What is a function? That's what we're going to discuss in this video. What is a function? A function is essentially a relationship. A function is simply a relationship between two variables. What is a function? The answer is a function. A function is a relationship between between two variables. Is a relationship between two variables. For example, two or more variables. Sometimes you have, uh, of course, there is a dependent variable, and then sometimes you have more than one independent variables. But here we're going to keep it simple. So a function is a relationship between two or more variables. We're going to just keep it simple. We're going to say a function is a relationship between two variables. For example, for example, this, there's a relationship y equals 2x. That's a function. y equals 2x is a function. And so is, and so is y equals 2x plus 3. But as we can clearly see, as we can clearly see, these two are two different relationships. The relationship, the nature of the relationship between the variable x and the y is very different in this relationship. We have to be able to distinguish themselves. We have to be able to tell one apart from the other. Just like we do not go around in the world saying, you, oh, not you, not that, or whatever, they are not that. We give people names. We can we give people names so we can identify different people. The same exact logic applies here. In order to be able to, in order for us to be able to identify two different relationships, we must assign them two different names. We must give them two different names. For example, for example, the first one here, the first one right here, and the second one right here. The first one right here, y is equal to two x. Let's give it. Just let's call this relationship f, and we, it is read as f of x. It is read as f of x. f is the name. f is the name of the relationship. Here's another one. y is equal to x plus 3. x plus 3. Right here, x plus 3. Now that is clearly a different relationship. It must be given a different name. Let's call it g of x. Here's another one. y is equal to x squared minus 4 y is equal to x squared minus 4. Again, clearly a different relationship is unlike the other two that we just encountered. We have to give it a different name. Let's call it h of x. Here's another one. y is equal to square root of x squared minus 1. Again, the square root of x squared minus 1 and uh, minus 4 is very different relationship than the one we just spoke of. It has to be given a name. Let's give it a name. Let's call it j of x. And finally, one more. y is equal to 1 over x. Again, entirely different relationship. We have to give it a new name. k of x. Notice that letter i, notice that we went from, we, notice that we went from F to G, F, G, H. There is no I. Letter I is missing. Letter I. Letter I. Is usually. Not used. Not used. To. To name. A relationship. To name a relationship. Which is same as saying. To name a function. Neither is letter O. Neither is letter O. O1, O1, 
for very clear reason obviously because it confuses us with the with the with the quantity zero and letter i is also now used here so there we go let's talk about the next concept let's talk about the next concept which is what does it mean what is what is the requirement for something to to be a function for something to be to qualify as a function what is that one important condition that it must it must fulfill for it to be a function or a relationship when we say for it to be a function by it we mean a relationship between two variables for it to be a function for it to be a function each given value of x must must give us only one value of y only one value of y for each given value of x must give us one unique value of y we cannot say for example we need the room now we're going to come back to this five relationship in a second we're going to talk about this five five relationship these five functions that we have just identified as f g h j and and k these five relationships that we just spoke of, these five functions that we just spoke of, we're going to come back to them in a second. We're going to talk about the next concept, which is the domain and the range. We'll discuss their domains and their range in, in, in a second. But let's first finish what we're talking about here. For it to be a function, each given value of x must give us only one value of y. In other words, in other words, we cannot say, in other words, We cannot, we cannot say when, for example, we cannot say when x is equal to 3, y might be, y might be 0 or say negative 7. This is not a function. This is not a function. Why is it not a function? Because it fails to provide us a unique value for, for each given value of x. It, for each given value of x, x, it fails to provide us a unique value of y. Because you see there are two values. of. It says when x is 3, for it to be a function, the given value of x, here the given value of x being 3, it must give us one unique value of y. It fails to do so here. It tells me that when x is 3, y might be 0 or negative 7. Well, since this profiles provide us uh, a unique value of dependent variable, y is a dependent variable, x is the independent variable, it is not a function. It is not a function. However, however, the reverse is not true. The reverse is not true. In other words, it is okay. It is quite alright. It is quite okay. It is okay for a given value of y to correspond to two different values of x. That is quite alright and that is a function. I'm going to raise this bottom part. We don't need it anymore. For example, here is a very simple example. For example, let's take a, let's, let, let's take a parabola here. A very simple, uh, let's take a parabola here. Uh, let's see what it's, well, we could just, do, well, I'm just going to draw a freehand here. Here's a parabola. Here's a parabola. As you can see, it's a parabola. What do we notice? We notice that not just one place, but several places. For example, one easy one to talk about is that. What's the value of y here? The value of y is 0. What's the value of y here? 
the value of y is 0. The value of y is 0, but here it's a different value of x. Here, in other words, when x, when the value of x coordinate here is a, y is 0. When the value of x coordinate is b, y is also 0. As you can see, it is okay. The reverse does not have to be true. It is okay for a given value of y, the given value of y being 0 here, to correspond to two different values of y. The value of y here, value of 0 here, the value of y being 0 here, corresponds to two different values of x, a and b. And there are a whole bunch of, there are a whole bunch of pairs like that. Here's another one. Here's another one, for example. Of course, there's a given value of y here, and, and the, that value of y corresponds to this value of x and that value of x. And of course, there are infinite pairs like that. And that is a function. It is okay. It is okay for, it is okay for uh, a given value of y to correspond to two different values of x, but the reverse does, has to hold, the reverse cannot, can, cannot be, cannot be there. The two different values of x cannot give us a unique value, same value of y. Each value of x must give us a unique value of y, which is true here. Each value of x. When, when x is this, it gives us only one value of y. It does not, when x is equal to a, y is a, 0. That's it. That's the only value of y. Similarly here, when x is this, the y is 0. When x is, when, when the value of x here is whatever this is here, the y value is this. One given value of x gives us one unique value of y. It is a function. Let's talk about the next thing, the next concept, which is the domain in the range. What does it mean, domain and range? Domain are all possible, or if you like, allowable values of x. All possible values that x can take. Range are the resulting values, are the resulting values of y. Resulting values of y or corresponding value of y, same idea. So let's talk about, let's talk about what values is x allowed to take what values is x permitted to assume for the five function that we just discussed? After we talk about the domain of those five functions that we just discussed in the blackboard a little while ago, then we'll do the three problems that you see. <coughs> then we'll do the three problems that you see on page number 245, on the top of page 245, there are three problems where they want us to identify the domain of those three functions and we'll do those in a second. Let's first talk about the domain of the five functions that we laid out before. Here was the first one. The first one was f of x is equal to y, which is in turn is equal to x. Here, you can, here, here we can clearly see there are there are no restrictions. No restrictions on what values on what values x can take i'm going to take, change my marker because i don't like it it's getting very light there are no restrictions x can take any value it wants to take x can take whatever x can be whatever the bloody hell it wants to be there are no restrictions on x instead of saying x can be whatever the bloody hell it wants to be in the language of mathematics, in the language of mathematics, we say it, we say that the domain here, domain here is a set of all real numbers. Set of all real numbers. Saying that, saying that this domain is a set of all real numbers, in English language, it simply means x can be whatever the bloody hell it wants to be. There are no restrictions on it. Let's do one more. Second one. 
the g of x. What was the g of x? g of x was x plus 3. Again, as you, as you can see there, there are no limitations here. You can put any values of x and it will give you, without any problem, a generated value of y. There are no restrictions. The domain for this function is the same as the domain for the previous function. The domain for this function is also a set of all real numbers. However, every once in a while we come across situations where we may have a problem where we have to restrict, where x is not allowed to take just any old value it wants to take. There are certain values that x cannot take. We'll see them in a second. And we'll have to exclude them. We'll have to exclude those non-permissible values of x from the domain. We'll get to that in a second. Let's do one more. Number three. H of x. H of x, the third one that we did was y is equal to x squared minus 4. Again, there is no problem. Here also, there are no restrictions. Here also, there are no restrictions on what values y can assume. The domain, again, is set of all real numbers. But what happens, but what happens once we put a square root sign on it? which was our next one. What happens when we put a square root sign of it? Now we got a problem. Now we have a problem. Let's see what happens. Once we have a square root sign underneath, we cannot take a square root of a negative number. For example, we cannot take a square root of a negative number. For example, for example, here, x cannot equal to, x cannot equal to 5, for example. Oh, rather, I didn't mean to say 5, 3, let's just say. x squared, x squared, well actually 3 is fine. x squared cannot be less than 4. If x squared happens to be less than 4, this will end up in a negative quantity. In the, in the, under the square root sign, will up, end up in a negative quantity. And we cannot take a square root of a negative number. It's not a real number. For example here, x cannot be 1. What happens when x is 1? y is equal to x squared, which is 1 squared, minus 4, will end up with the square root of 3. And square root of 3 is not a real number. We, square root of 3 is an imaginary number. So here there are restrictions. What restrictions do we have here? The restriction here is that... What restriction do we have here? The restriction here... The restriction here... is that... x squared cannot be less than 4. It can be equal to 4. x squared can certainly be equal to 4. If x squared is equal to 4, 4 minus 4 is 0, and we take a square root of 0, which is 0. So that is possible. That's permissible. But it cannot be less than 4. x squared, that is. Do you understand? The restriction here is that, the restriction here is that x squared cannot be less than 4. Which is same as saying, which is same as saying that uh, that either, which is same as saying either x has to be greater or equal to two. If x is greater than or equal to two, then x squared would be equal to greater than four. Oh, because it cannot be. So here. I don't want to confuse you here. The restriction here is that x squared cannot be less than 4. In other words, x squared has to be more than 4. x squared must be more than 4. And x squared can be more than 4 in two situations. Either when x is greater than or equal to 2. If x is greater than or equal to 2, when you take a square of it, it's going to be more than 4. Or, or, another possibility is that x is either less than or equal to negative 2. I shouldn't put equal sign here because there is no equal sign here. What happens when x is less than negative 2? For example, for example, if x is equal to negative 3, that would be fine. Because when we take a square root, a square of that, we end up with 9. And 9 minus 4 it ends up in a positive quantity. So either x is greater than 2 or less than negative 2. And that is your domain. That is your domain. Domain here is set of all values here. Domain is such a fancy way of saying permissible values of y. What value uh, values y can take? What values 
are is y allowed to take is what values is y allowed to assume well here it better be either less than negative 2 or more than 2 less than or equal to negative 2 or more than or equal to positive 2 it cannot take anything in between negative 2 and 2 if it did we'll have a problem this quantity will become 0 for example x cannot be 0 if x is x were to 0 we'll end up with a square root of negative 4 we can't take a square root of a negative number so here here the domain is set of oh my god the handwriting is getting horrendous set of all values of x such that either x is greater or equal to positive 2 or less than or equal to negative 2. And if you wanted to show the domain on the number line, if you want to show the domain on the number line, it looks like this. There is a number line here, goes either way here, there is a 0, there is a negative 2, there is a positive 2. And since it's allowed to be equal to, since since it's allowed to be equal to, it's okay for it to be equal to negative 2 or positive 2 because in either case we'll end up with a 0 under the square root sign. And because it's allowed allowed to be equal to these dots are, these are going to be filled in dots. And it better be either less than or equal to negative 2 or more than or equal to positive 2. Anything that falls in between is not part of the domain, which is same as saying is not allowed. X cannot be anything between negative 2 and positive 2. That was 4. Let's do the fifth one. I think we had 5 of them so that we can quickly go to the uh, go to the three problems in the book. So the fifth one was fifth one is actually very simple. The fifth one was y is equal to y is equal to k of x. We gave it a name of k, and that is equal to one over x. Here, here, the the only restriction here in this case, the only restriction, the only restriction here is that we have to raise all of this thing. We're done with it. this. Was from the previous problem. Give me a second. The only restriction here is that the only restriction here is that x cannot be equal to zero. That's it. That's the only restriction. X cannot be equal to zero because what happens? What happens if x is equal to zero? We end up with one over zero. And we cannot divide a number by zero because uh, any number divided by zero is undefined. So we can't have that. We can't have that. In other words, the domain here is if, so. Instead of saying the, instead of saying the only restriction here is that x cannot be equal to zero, instead of saying instead of saying that here x cannot be equal cannot be the, instead of saying that the only restriction here is that x cannot be equal to zero, instead of saying it like that in English language, in the language of mathematics, we would say the domain. The domain here is domain here is set of all real numbers, all real numbers except zero. These two these two statements are the exact same statements. One is written in English language, one is written in mathematical language. The only restriction on x here is that it cannot equal to zero. Instead of saying it that way, mathematicians will say the domain of this function is set of all real numbers except zero. Do you understand? Let's do the three problems that appear in the book. But we're going to start. We're going to continue the names so that we don't get confused. Yeah, we're going to continue the names. We are up to. We are up to k. We are up to k. So now I'm going to erase this thing. We're going to continue here. Actually, 
actually let's not continue the names here. So, uh, when we start doing the problems, three problems in the book, 2.6.1, 2.6.1, in that thing the relationship is called F. In the 2.6.2 they call it G. In 2.6.3 they call it H. Because there is only three of them, so instead of continuing the names, or we could continue the naming the baby word, it really doesn't matter. I'm making too much fuss about it. Let's not, let's not start with F again. We stopped, the last one was K, after K comes L. So 2.6.1 would be the L of X, which is equal to Y, and which we are told is 2X over X minus 6. Are there, any, are there any restrictions here on X? Are there any values that X is not allowed to take? The answer is yes, there is one restriction. Here, here, the only restriction is that x cannot equal 6. Here, the only restriction is that x cannot equal to 6. Why? 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 What happens when x equals to 6? When x equals, if x happens to be equal to 6, 6 minus 6 is 0, and we'll end up with 12 divided by 0. It's undefined. We cannot divide by zero. So that's the only restriction. Instead of saying it like this, instead of saying that the only restriction here is that x cannot equal 6, in the language of mathematics we'll say the domain is the set of all real numbers, all, all real numbers, except, except 6. Except 6. Set of all real numbers except 6. Let's do the next one, 2.6.2. We were up to L, the next one is going to be M. And what does 2.6.2 say? So again, one more time, I'm just continuing the naming system that we had before, sort of picking up from F again, because we want to, we want to be able to distinguish our first function and their, their first function. They are different functions. We cannot call them, both of them F, in the context of the same work. If we were doing two different occasions and if you call two different variables the same name it's okay because they are two different occasions two different two different uh, contexts but since we're continuing it since we're continuing since we're continuing with everything we cannot call two different functions the same name so we cannot we not we cannot call the 2.6.1 f because we already called something else f so that's why we have to continue m which is the next one and the function that is given to us here is x cubed plus x plus square root of x plus 2 minus 10 minus 10. Did I write it properly? Is that what they're talking about? Yes. Are there any restrictions here? Are there any restrictions here? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. The restriction here, the restriction, again the only restriction here uh, we're going to say only, but it turns out actually there are in infinite numbers or infinite values that x cannot take. But let's start out by saying the only. The, the word only here would have a very special meaning. The only restriction, restriction here is that the quantity under the square root sign, the quantity under the square root sign, cannot be negative. Of course, the quantity under the square root sign cannot be negative. We cannot take a square root of a negative number. No such values exist. No real number exists. Do you understand? Instead of saying that the quantity under the square root sign cannot be negative, this is the English language, in mathematics we'll say that x plus 2 has to be positive or equal to 0. 0, zero is fine. It can be 0. Let's subtract 2 from both sides, and what it says is that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 2. Voila! That's the only restriction. x has to be greater than or equal to negative 2. It can be equal to negative 2, because when x is equal to negative 2, negative 2 and a positive will give us 0, and we can take a square root of 0. But x cannot be negative 1, for example. x cannot be, it has to be greater than. Oh, it can be negative. It cannot be negative three, for example. X cannot be negative three. Negative three plus a two will end up with a square root of negative one. We cannot take a square root of negative one. X has to be something 
more than or equal to negative 2. So how do we write it? We say, so that's it. So domain here, domain here is set of all, all real numbers as long as, as long as x is greater than or equal to negative 2. That's how we say it. Domain is a set of all real numbers greater than or equal to negative 2. And once you put it like that, we realize that we started out by saying the only restriction, it is true, it is the only restriction, but it's not just one unique value. We, we're, not saying, we're not saying here that x cannot be 6 like the last time. There are infinite values that x cannot take. It cannot take any values less than negative 2. On the number line, if you wanted to show the domain on the number line, there's our number line, there's our 0, there's our negative 2. It is, it is allowed to take negative 2. It, is, it can be equal to negative 2. Because when we talked about it, if it's negative 2, we'll just get a 0 here. So since it's allowed to be equal to negative 2, we have to close this circle with anything on this side. But of course, on the left-hand side of negative 2, there are infinite no values that exist. And it cannot take any of those values. That's what we mean by the only restriction. Only restriction does not mean unique value. It, it means a restriction. Let's do the last one, 2.6.3. 2.6.3, let's call it N. After M comes N, if I know my alphabet. And what's the relationship? The relationship that they give us here is... Absolute value of x, well that's very simple. Absolute value of x. What about here? Well, let's ask ourselves, can we, should we? Let's ask ourselves, can x be negative? The answer is yes. Can x be negative 5? Of course, if x is negative 5, y would be just 5. Can x be 0? Of course, x can be 0. Can x be fraction? Can x be half? Of course, it can be half. Can x be positive? The answer is yes. So what do we conclude? There are no restrictions here. There are no restrictions here. There are no restrictions on x. Another way of saying the same thing is that the domain is a set of all real numbers. There are no restrictions set of all real numbers. We're not saying it, it is set of all real numbers except this and except that or except this. No, no, there are no restrictions. Unlike before, where we said this is, the domain is set of all the real numbers as long as it is more than negative. There is no such thing here. There are no restrictions at all. There are absolutely no restrictions, which is same as saying the domain is a set of all real numbers. That was the end of the three problems there. So we discussed what a, uh, in, in a very, very fundamental and a very rudimentary rudimentary manner what a function is, what it means to be dom uh, to, to have a domain, the range, and we talked about uh, domains of actually eight functions, didn't we? Five of our own and three from the book. And I think that's enough for today. Right? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.